Do you still love Star Wars now the same way you did when you first saw it in a theater or wherever you were? Absolutely. I consider myself just a huge Star Wars fan. I, uh, I, 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 I love Star Wars. I um, am wildly not objective about Star Wars. Uh, and, but, you know, it's interesting from a, you know, I, I, I try to be objective about Star Wars, but I find myself um, loving it anyway. And I, you know, I, I go back and, and I look at Star Wars and I, I you know, I, I read, I uh, recently read the script of episode one of Phantom Menace and may have been the worst script I've ever read. Like just, it's just, it's just a really bad script in my opinion. It was just terrible. It's terrible. I still love the movie. I still love the movie. Uh, and it's interesting. I think, you know, you look at some artistic decisions, you know, how, how you watch Black Swan and then you see how did George Lucas turn Natalie Portman into a bad actress? Like, how did that even, like Ewan McGregor, Liam Neeson, and Natalie Portman, how do you turn those people into, and, and, and Samuel L. Jackson, how do, you, how do you turn them into bad actors uh, that are wooden and stiff? Like, that's, that's hard to do. He, he did that. They, like, they weren't that great. Think of the artistic choice of the second Death Star. In, uh, in Return of the Jedi. I was thinking about that the other day. Uh, you, you have the Death Star in, in the first movie, and then you get to the third movie, and the, and the, and, and, and the central plot is around uh, a second Death Star. That, that, in today's market, I think, would be just like laughed at, and people would say it's lazy writing and doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense. But I love it. I love, I love the original movies. I love the prequel trilogy. I love the new movies that were a mess in a lot of ways. Uh, I feel like the Rise of Skywalker was three movies shoved into two hours and it was pacing issues and all this stuff, but I still love it. And that's, the, I think, the magic of Star Wars is that Star Wars doesn't have to be perfect. It, 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 it taps into this youthful uh, whimsy, this, this, uh, the, this, your imagination and, and things just take over and, and, and it, it takes you to this childlike place where... You don't have to be objectively filmmakery when you watch Star Wars, right? And and uh, you know, of course, I want the movies to be good, and of course, you want the, the craft to be great. Um, but you know, Star Wars is Star Wars, and uh, and and I'm still a huge fan. I'm, I'm a fan of what they're doing, you know, on the on the streaming stuff with the Mandalorian and everything else. Um, but uh, um, you know, for me, Star Wars is 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 like an old box. And some like an old empty box, and me as a dad, I have a, I have a seven year old and a and a six month old, and uh, it's interesting. Like I'll look at an uh, at an empty box as an old empty box, but a kid looks at that empty box and it becomes a spaceship, or it becomes a carriage, or it becomes a tank, or it becomes a castle, or it becomes all of those in the course of twenty five minutes, right? I think Star Wars is like that old empty box. To, to some filmmakers and writers and artists and critics, they say, that's, that's, there's nothing special about that. That's not great. I don't get it. It's just a box. But for me, when I look at Star Wars, I look at, at it like the seven-year-old looking at the empty box. Say, no, 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 that's not a box. That's, 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 that's an airplane, right? That's a spaceship. And, uh, and, and it takes a different lens to, to look through it. And, and so, you know, I am, I am unabashed of, of, uh, of my love for, epi, uh, for, for uh, 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 The Last Jedi, right? Which is the most divisive Star Wars film ever, Ryan Johnson's, uh, uh, you know, episode nine. Um, I loved it. I didn't love everything about it, but I loved it. I loved, uh, I loved uh, um, uh, uh, The Rise of Skywalker. I loved it. Do I love everything about it? Of course not. Do I love everything about, uh, about Return of the Jedi? Of course not. But I still love the movie as a whole. And I think we, we've, the fandom has gotten to a point of this deconstructionism of, of they, people pick on things and they say, I, this doesn't, you know. I mean, think back with Game of Thrones. And, you know, Game of, last season of Game of Thrones gave us, you know, the, the battle, uh, battle of Winterfell gave us one of the most dramatic, interesting, coolest episodes of TV ever filmed ever in history and the only thing people could talk about the next day was the coffee cup they left in the scene and because that's today's thing like that's just the way the internet is and that's just the way twitter is and 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 people like to deconstruct it and say oh that's lazy or they dropped they they they, they fumbled the landing or whatever they didn't end it right uh jj uh, abrams didn't do this right he didn't get this character right i don't like how ryan johnson did uh, luke skywalker in this and they nitpick and nitpick and yeah and the, you know 
things, you know, things could be different and things aren't perfect and we don't love everything, but ultimately, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan and I, I love it because it, it's just, you know, it's, it's escapism and, and, um, you know, and I try honestly as, as a professional, and I think all of us professionals understand how difficult it is to make anything and how like, it's a miracle that any movie ever gets made ever. Uh, and so I've, I've learned to even look at quote unquote bad films and still appreciate them. Like, wow, they actually made that even though it's terrible and I wasn't, didn't necessarily enjoy it. They still made it. And, and the fact that the, the fact that, you know, that, that anything gets made, I'm going to appreciate it. And if I can't do better than that, I try not to criticize it, uh, and, and say that's garbage or that's lazy or whatever. Um, again, I don't love everything about it, but ultimately I look, I look at, I look at the Star Wars films and, and, and just with, with immense respect for how they've been able to keep that IP alive over 60 years or 50 years, however long it's been, how much they've been able to scale the brand, how long they've been able to sustain the fan community and create the culture that they have uh, to continue to, to, to push artistic boundaries of what they're doing with the Mandalorian and the volumetric capture stage that, that they, they, they built and, and uh, just, you know, the, the storytelling of the Mandalorian, what they're doing, what they're doing now with all the crossover stuff that the, that on, on Disney Plus is absolutely incredible. You have somebody like a, a character like Ahsoka Tano. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get Star Wars nerdy for a second. Yeah, but you have a character like Ahsoka Tano, who is a character from the Clone Wars animated series that they then pull into a different animated series, Star Wars Rebels, that they then pull into a live action series of the Mandalorian uh, and cast a live action actress, and now gonna spin her off to her own live action series on Disney Plus. What they're doing from a trans in a transmedia sense is just really super interesting. And, and how they revived the Star Wars, I mean, say revive, it's not like it was dead, but like the way they brought Star Wars back in front of culture with Baby Yoda, and and now we know as Grogu, but but ever like everybody was talking about Baby Yoda, just a cultural sensation of Baby Yoda. So it's just a really smart, interesting choices that they make, and especially now with Star, they they, have, they just uh, they have something now called Star Wars Visions, where they it's it's uh, it's um, animated short films that are all done, created in the manga style. Uh, so you like uh, Japanese animation, it's all done in with, with manga creators uh, telling manga stories uh, in the Star Wars universe that are very much catered to, uh, to a completely new market, a younger market, a, a more Eastern market where Star Wars hasn't been able to really get a foothold as a brand very much. And, 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 it, and it works and it's good and it's, and it, and it's, it's powerful storytelling. And um, so I, I appreciate them as a fan, I appreciate them as a filmmaker, and I appreciate them as somebody who understands how to build and sustain IP. Like the way they do it is just a masterclass on, on how to keep an engine like that running, and not just running, but thriving in the midst of multiple, multiple decades. This really is a tremendous thing. And it all goes back to how George Lucas created and built the whole thing. It's really like he, he approached it in a, a unique way, and they've continued to, to keep that going. Do you think dividing the fandom is by design? I don't think it's by design. I think it's I think it's a byproduct of today's toxic fandom uh, that is just a thing that that goes on now. Um, but I, I think if you were to criticize Lucasfilm uh, for something, it's it's with the movies they they didn't listen to the fandom. Um, not saying that Star Wars movie, the Star Wars fans should decide what's in the Star Wars movies. Um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm very much certain that if Star Wars fans somehow collectively decided what the next Star Wars movie was going to be, it would be terrible. Uh, uh, there is artistic integrity and autonomy with, with the filmmakers. But if you look at somebody like Kathleen Kennedy, Kathleen Kennedy is... She's an old school filmmaker's filmmaker. She's an old school filmmaker's producer. You know the the way she used to produce you know old you know Steven Spielberg stuff, uh, and um, she's very much a filmmaker's producer. She likes to let the filmmakers run and make great movies, and uh, and I think part of the misstep of of the 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 latest trilogy has been 
in her letting the filmmakers kind of run with their own visions and the Lego blocks don't fit together with the trilogy as well and not really being in tune with the fandom and 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 what the fandom you know the directions and the, what the expectations are and uh and, and being able to set the expectations with with the fandom and and uh, not that you can please everybody of course you can't but um but uh in so, with something like Star Wars you just can't approach it in the way you would any other movie it's just a whole other organism that you have to understand that the fans are part of the process now and uh and setting expectation and avoiding cognitive dissonance is a really important thing with uh, with with understanding how fandoms work. So if I if 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 um, if if I was if I were to go to the south of France for a vacation, and and I get there and it's uh, overcast and rainy and cold and super expensive and everybody's grouchy and, and not very nice. I would come back from that vacation very upset and frustrated. It wasn't a great vacation. But if I go to New York City and it's overcast and cold and rainy and really expensive and everybody's grouchy, guess what? That's New York City. Like I don't, I'm not I, like I'm not frustrated with that a bit. That's the New York City experience. The difference is what's your expectation? And so if 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 I have the expectation that it's going to be warm and bright and sunny and everybody's going to be sweet and nice, and it's the opposite of that, that's where frustration kicks in because of cognitive dissonance. And so managing expectation of audiences and 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 letting them know the direction that we're going and some of the things we're trying to achieve and 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 letting them have a voice and 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 making them part of the conversation and 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 helping shape some sort of expectation in their mind, not saying plot points or things like that or big reveals, I'm sorry, just general direction that the, that the franchise is heading. Uh, that conversation is super important to have with fandoms today. And that's something that Lucasfilm and Kathleen Kennedy didn't do when it came to the, 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 the sequel trilogy, as they call it. And, and, you, and you see now all of a sudden, you know, when, when uh, you know, I think everybody was on board for Force Awakens, but then when Ryan Johnson did The Last Jedi and Luke Skywalker didn't act like people thought Luke Skywalker should act. And there were some choices that were made that were surprising and didn't go the, and then then all of a sudden Rise of Skywalker went in some different directions. It, 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 that started to divide the fandom. And, uh, and and some people loved it, some people hated it, and we, they, all, they all couldn't agree. And, uh, but, but there wasn't enough community building I think they just took the, the community for granted. I think they, they said, as long as we give them a Star Wars movie, everything will work out. And it just, you know, it didn't, didn't work. But that being said, they, the, the, you know, Kathleen Kennedy gave us The Mandalorian. Kathleen Kennedy gave us Rogue One, which I think is one of the best Star Wars movies ever made. Uh, uh, Kathleen Kennedy has, is, you know, giving us, uh, she, she brought in John Favreau for, for The Mandalorian. She's the, the, the book of Boba Fett. She's overseeing all that. Like Kathleen Kennedy, I think, has done more good things than, the bad things. It just so happens that I think the misstep was on the biggest stage with the new trilogy because Star Wars really is built around trilogies, and uh, that's the legacy of Star Wars. And so you have to nail those. Uh, they, I think we could fumble some Disney Plus series, and the fans would gripe about it. But you can't fumble the 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 the, uh, um, the trilogy. And I'm not saying it's complete fumble, but it wasn't it wasn't as good as it should have been from a from a from a trilogy standpoint there should have been uh she should have made sure that there was there was a creative vision and a creative plan that was that was in place before they even started the first movie and they were able to see that through so there would be lego blocks that connected in the, the best possible way make sure the community was on board and, and understood the direction that we're going uh, they were going in to avoid the cognitive dissonance uh, and that didn't happen so that being said the movie is still wildly successful but it, but ultimately it created this division in the fan base, but the Mandalorian kind of brought them all back together. And so even though you may hate Last Jedi and I love Last Jedi, we can all high five on Baby Yoda, right? And uh, and so that's been, that's been I think, a really good thing for the fandom is, is, is the Mandalorian's kind of brought it all back, so. Should Star Wars ever make another trilogy? Oh, absolutely. I think they should make a hundred more trilogies. As long as the market it will bear it as long as Star Wars fans want more Star Wars movies. Absolutely. 
if Star Wars fans don't want more Star Wars movies, then, then no, right? The market should decide whether they should make more or whether they shouldn't make more. Uh, I, I would love, I would love more, right? Uh, uh, and, and I think we're going to, I think we're going to, we're going to see more. I think we're going to see standalone movies and I think we're going to see trilogies. I think the trilogies will be approached differently uh, moving forward. But you, Patty Jenkins is coming in. You know, she she did Wonder Woman, the, both the Wonder Woman movies. She's doing a Rogue Squadron film, which should be great. Uh, Kevin Feige is uh, going to be producing uh, a, uh, uh, a Star Wars film. Taika Waititi is uh, writing his own Star Wars movie. Ryan Johnson, uh, it, it, uh, from what I've read, still has uh, Star Wars, uh, a trilogy that they're going to allow him to do, which will probably be super divisive. And uh, But I think if you give him a trilogy that's just his, it works a lot better, right? Uh, especially after this, what we're seeing, like his success in Knives Out and things like that since then, I think has, has changed his star power a little bit to where I think people trust trust him a little bit more with it uh, than, than maybe they did before. Or at least they should because Knives Out is great and Knives Out 2 should be great as well. Uh, I'm a big Ryan Johnson fan. If you go back to Brick and things like that, he's just great. Um, but but yeah, absolutely, 100%, they should they should continue to make trilogies. They can they should continue to make standalone. They should continue to do animation. They should, could, uh, should continue to do live action series, games, uh, uh, board games, video games, novels. Uh, what they're doing right now in, in the publishing space is super, super, super impressive with the, what they call the High Republic, um, uh, the, the High Republic part of the universe, which is thousands of years before the prequel trilogy. Uh, you go back to the, the days where the Jedi were like the um, the, the, the Wild West sheriffs, uh, you know, in, in, in sort of this, this really rough part of the galaxy. And and uh, they they have coordinated with multiple authors and multiple comic creators and multiple novelists and and uh, and, and they all have have worked out this tremendous publishing plan where they're where they're publishing adult novels, YA novels, junior novels, comic books that all tie in together to create one big publishing experience that then is going to spin into a live action show for Disney Plus that's gonna be uh, called The Acolyte, which is gonna be set in the High Republic era, which they just also announced a new video game that's gonna be set in the uh, the Knights of the Old Republic, supposedly set in the, in the similar time, um, and uh, and probably then probably become the new trilogy. I think part of the the, the, the problem with the sequel trilogy outside of the Lego blocks not fitting together because the plan wasn't installed, is you're dealing with legacy characters that everybody cares about. Luke Skywalker and Han Solo and Princess Leia and Chewbacca. And so all of a sudden, everybody has ideas of how those characters should go and how and what we should do with them. You can't kill that one, but you should kill that one. Things like that. I think, I think any new trilogy needs to unhitch from those legacy characters and establish new characters and uh, new stories in different parts of the galaxy uh, dealing with different things. And so you don't have all that legacy baggage. That's why I think the Mandalorian worked is because it, it, was, it, it didn't have to deal with any of those legacy characters. And we all like, okay, we don't have any expectations anymore of, 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 of how Luke Skywalker's story should end. We can all just enjoy this new ride together. And so I think I, I think that will probably be the way of a new trilogy, um, but but who knows? I mean, right? I mean, who knows the, the way it'll go? I mean, if Star Wars is sort of built around this idea of uh, of of pulling in, you know, the crossover of different things and taking minor characters from the background of this one scene in A New Hope, and now we're going to make that a major character in The Mandalorian, and and that's cool for fandoms. And there's this very and, incestuous approach to Star Wars, which maybe is not the best word to use, but maybe is the right word since Luke and Leia actually kiss and then you find out they're brother and sister, which is all, again, one of those weird things that we just love Star Wars so we overlook. Uh, but, uh, but, but it's very, uh, very connected in, in the, way they, well, the way Lucas always dynamically connected all the stuff and the Lucasfilm with, the, with what they call the story group which is the, the the team that oversees the connection between all the different uh, video games and movies and TV shows, how it all works together. So if, there will always be connection and crossover, but I think moving past those legacy characters is gonna, is gonna 
created create a more forgiving uh, perspective on a, on a new trilogy uh, that, that they didn't have with the sequel trilogy. Even though they had different protagonists, the fact that Luke Skywalker was in there and Han Solo was in there and, you know, J.J. killed Han Solo uh, in, in Force Awakens and it just, like, freaked so many people out, even though I thought it was a, kind of a powerful, interesting moment uh, uh, in, in the movie. It really just made a lot of people mad because they love Han Solo and they, we think they should never die. And, Star Wars fans are weird like that, but it, but it's, it's. I think unhitching from those characters is really going to be be the way forward. So uh, I really look forward to all the new content, whether whether it's 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 feature films or not. What I do think though is that they'll really manage the windowing of the release of the films. It w- it was getting to a point to where you know they were they were releasing one a year, and uh, that I think was was difficult especially when you put in the marvel movies in the mix uh black panther and solo were released you know just a few weeks apart and and you know there there was some disney cannibalization going on i think the way forward for star wars movies is just spacing them out more right especially if you have the disney plus content and the publishing content and the the game content to kind of go between the movies to to help continue to feed the fan base between those big releases uh i think that's going to make them more special and um uh, because once you start kind of pumping them out so much you, they start to lose their shine a little bit um and um especially when it comes to you know the, the interconnected stories it's just it's just uh they become less special so windowing i think will help